Hey everybody, welcome back to Vassal 201. Today I'm talking about working with log files in uh, lesson 14. So I'm going to cover four, maybe five quick topics. What is a log file? Um, how to record a log file? How to load and step through a log file? And then how to combine multiple log files if you have a game that runs over multiple sessions. And then uh, at the very end, I'm going to show you a quick, quick preview of how to use a log file to analyze your uh, Vassal dice stats, which some people, some of us nerdy people like to get into um, using the Vassal templates program, which is going to be uh, the next three lessons after this, lesson 15, 16, and 17 will be uh, details on how to use the Vassal templates program. But this will be a, a little preview of that. Um, so let's get into uh, what is a log file. So a log file in a nutshell is a way for Vassal to record events and actions uh, within your game from some starting point to some ending point. The starting point being when you begin the log file and the end point being when you end the log file and it writes it out. It records everything that you do within the game between those two points. Um, and why would you do this? Well, a couple of reasons. One, you have a complete record of your entire game that you can step through as a learning process or examples, uh, or you can mail it to somebody, email it to somebody um, to look, look at. I know Stu does um, his Tactical Tuesdays, and I think he asks for log files to be emailed to him, and, and they, he steps through and does analysis of things. Um, the other reason is if you do play by email, whether it's using Vassal or if you're playing ASL or any other game, um, it'll record your log file and uh, you can email log files back and forth and do play by email game, which is very handy. Um, so next I'm going to go into uh, how to record a log file. It's actually very simple. So what I have here is a mock game setup. I have a regular Russian unit uh, and a berserk uh, Russian unit, just to show you uh, easy to discern the difference between the two as I move them in dis different sessions. So to begin a log file, um, you just go up to File, uh, Begin Log File. It'll ask you for a name. Uh, I'm going to call it Log File File One. One, if I can type. And now uh, my actions are being recorded. So let me just move this regular non-berserk unit around, make him counter exhausted, do some die rolls, check a line of sight real quick. Okay, um, let's assume our session is done for this portion of the game or for the day, and you just hit end log file. And now the log file has been written out as it'll show here in the dialog window at the top. Um, now let's say you are going to play your next session and you've loaded to the, you've saved the game and you've loaded it to this point. Um, what you wanna do is again, just begin another log file. And let's call this log file two. And in this case, I'm going to move the Berserk unit around. <clears throat> Excuse me. Move them around. Make a few die rolls. Probably roll boxcars in there. There's a couple of 11s. That's nice. Um, and let me put him under... Let me pin him. Now let's uh, prep fire him. Okay. And then you've ended session two. And let's say this is the end of the game. And uh, so we end the log file and uh, it's been written out and now we have two log files comprised of the game uh, two sessions log file one and log file two and now we want to combine the two log files as one so let's let's close this game and assume um, you're at a you're starting at a new state nothing loaded and you just want to combine these two files so what you want to do is you want to go to file or fire up vassal i already have it loaded so i'm just going to go file and load game but in this case I'm going to load the log file the first log file okay here is basically the beginning state of the game um, right right after I started recording the log file now what you want to do is 
to combine the log files is you want to log your log file. So you want to start a log file and step through your log files so it records the log files, if that makes sense. So let's just uh, begin log file and let's, let's call this final. It'll be the final uh, game log file for this uh, scenario, this mock scenario, and hit save. Now start stepping through your log file using page down or the play key at the top, the step file at the top. And you'll see the top non-berserk unit, which was which was long file, log file one, is moving. And I'll step through that real quick. Okay, nothing else is happening, so the log file is done. Now, if you do anything, any other action on the screen now, it'll record it. So you do not want to do that. All you want to do is record. You want to log your log files, make a recording of your log files. So now that you're at the end of log file one, come up to file, load continuation, pick log file two, and now step through that. And that should be the berserk unit moving around. There we go. So now I'm logging log file two and stepping through that. And it is done. There's no more actions going on. Uh, now that I've stepped through log file one, log file two, and it's being logged into the final log file, I just hit file and log file. So now what I've done is I've taken log file one, recorded it, loaded log file two, recorded that in a log file, and then ended it. Now I should have one large log file, not large, but one final log file. So let me, let's load it. Let's go file, uh, close game, then go file, load game, or next time you load up Vasa to look at it. Let's load up final. Let's open that up. And we see the log file begins at the beginning state with both of these units over on the left side of the map here. Now let's begin stepping through just and see if the normal Russian unit moves and then the Berserk one moves for log file one and two respectively. Let me clear the uh, the die rolls so the die rolls show up more clearly the, from the log file. So we step through, we roll some dice, check line of sight, oh, then log file two kicks in, the Berserk unit moves, I do a few things, and we're at the end. Uh, now we're at the end of this log file. Um, it asked me if I want to start a new log file. I don't because I just combine log files. So I'm just going to hit no. Uh, so that's it. We've taken, we've, I've shown you how to record log files for various sessions and then take those log files and combine them into one long game log file for your reference or to email to uh, somebody else to take a look at or to play a play by email game. So next, I'm going to show you something that is pretty, pretty cool, in my opinion, being a stats nerd. There is a program called Vassal Templates. Um, some people watching, I'm sure, are familiar with it. Some may not be familiar with it. Um, it can do many things. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to do three videos to show you the things it's capable of doing. But this pertains to log files specifically. Um, the new version, which I don't think is released yet, I have the the beta version. Um, he sent it to me directly. And what he's added here is the ability for his program to analyze your uh, die roll, all of your die rolls for the entire game um, of the das Vassal Dice Bot and show you the statistics. So here's a game I've already loaded. I've loaded the, the log file and it parses all this data out. So you've got basically three sections here. You've got your single die roll stats. Um, this is a game I played earlier today. There are only, oh, a little over 100 rolls, 112 rolls so far in this game. So it doesn't paint a complete picture, but it's a decent amount of rolls. So here's your single die roll stats. Here are your two die roll stats. This shows you the distributions of your single die roll, distribution of your two die rolls, meaning um, my buddy Scott rolled 60% of the single die rolls and he rolled 48% of the double die rolls. And this shows a moving average 
view die rolls. So you can make adjustments to using this drop down box. Then over here is a hotness rating that the uh, programmer put in. How hot were the dice? Basically, if, you, if you're above zero, your dice are hot. If you're below zero, your dice are cold. And depending on the higher it is, basically the more rolls you have at the lower end of the scale. And the colder it is, the more rolls you have over on the upper, you know, 10 to 12s. I don't know the exact metrics that is, used, is being used here, but that's it in general. Uh, for this game, uh, myself and my buddy Scott were both actually pretty hot. I mean, the dice bot was very kind to us, at least in the first half of this game. Um, we're well below average. Um, not a whole lot to tell from the single die roll. We didn't make too many rolls. Um, but from this, you know, 112 die rolls, the uh, red line here is the expected uh, number or percentage for that type of roll. So, you know, you should get a five about 11.1% of the time. We looks like we were pretty close to average on that. Sixes, uh, looks like Scott was way above average rolling sixes. He was a little above average rolling fours, um, et cetera. So this gives you the overall distribution of you versus your opponent and how it matches with the expected um, statistical value for that. Um, the more interesting thing to me, at least from this dice stat window, is the moving average. And you can see um, almost the entire game so far, the moving average for both Scott and I is, is below seven. Uh, we've been rolling really well this game. Um, but the moving average in this case is uh, 10. So basically what it do does is it takes, uh, if people aren't familiar with the moving average, it takes, it's set to 10. So it takes 10 rolls, a window of 10 rolls, and it takes the average of those 10 rolls and takes that data point. So the one I have highlighted here, for example, is Scott's roll. So for die rolls one through 10, his average was 7.3. Let's go to his next point here. And then his, for die rolls number two, three, 11, basically it shifts a window of 10 die rolls, one roll, 7.1. So you can see the trend. Uh, so Scott didn't make a roll until after I'd already made uh, one, two, three, four, maybe six rolls, and then he started rolling. Uh, but you can see the moving average dipped way down and then moved up and then kind of evened out a little bit here. Uh, and then down below, it'll show the phases, roughly the turn and some of the phases um, you're in during this game. Now, if you adjust this, if you put it on this value here, which is no moving average, it will show you every die roll you made. Um, so my third die roll was Snake Eyes, and it was on a task check. Uh, my Snake Eye, my box cars was on other. That might have been a wind roll. I got a Snake Eyes on a morale check. He got a Snake Eyes on a morale check, and I got a Snake Eyes on a rally. So it'll show you literally every die roll and what the die roll was. Now, if you put it on say five. Um, it gets, your moving average gets a little more jittery and each time you increase it, it smooths the data a little bit because you're averaging more values. If we put it on 20, it's probably going to get really smooth. Yeah, but everything is below seven. So I'll talk about more about this in the Vassal templates program, how to load the log file, uh, how to set it up, etc. You can change colors. You can do all kinds of things. I just wanted to give a quick preview of this cool new feature that he added the Vassal Templates program to analyze um, all of your, not all, but a lot of the important um, dice statistics from your from your Vassal game. Um, so that's going to be a wrap for Lesson 14. Lesson, lesson 15 is going to hop into this Vassal Templates program. Let me, let me close the dice analysis tool. Um, this is Vassal Templates. We're going to jump into this. Uh, in lesson 15, I'm going to show you the basics, what it can do, how to include chapter H notes into your Vassal game, and armor information, ordnance information, and then lesson third lesson is going 17 is going to be um, how to use and set up 
and interpret the vassal dice bot statistics. Maybe by the time I get to that video, he will have released the beta version. If not, you'll be ready to use the uh, beta version. So until then, roll low just like this. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Snake eyes, baby. <laughs>